Welcome to U.S. Rugby Happy Hour Live. Interviews with the biggest names in American rugby. The New England Free Jacks, Major League Rugby Champions. Scoring! One on one to score! Here are your hosts, Bill Baker and that other guy. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I am Bill Baker and this is, what's your name? John Patrick. I'm going to get this right. Are we doing this thing? Are we dancing? Here we are. We're going to Vogue. Yes, everybody. Later on the show, we will be doing our best Madonna impersonations. So put on your Madonna hat and strap in. This This is going to be. I like this blur behind me, Bill. You can get rid of the blur? It's kind of a mess. That's fine. Whatever. I'll fix it in post. It is what it is. (laughs) Well, everybody listening in, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're here live right away, Thank you so much. I mean, you were you're probably waiting longer than Fitzy and I were doing. Um, for those of you joining in, as we get on, thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the show. We want you to comment during the show as well. Ask us questions. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to uh, to talk about today. We got USA Rugby men's and women's. Maybe a tiny bit of sevens we'll touch on, and then we want to talk a lot about MLR. And then later in the show, uh, Fantasy Ruckers Ryan Yi almost said Lee Ryan Yi joins us. Oh, he does. Yeah, he does. He's going to be coming in at some point. Yeah, we are, talk we are scraping the bottom of the barrel for games. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that like a, a fantasy ranking joke? Cause <laughs> yeah, you're right, because you two are near at yes. the bottom. Uh, oh, no, yeah, we, we're we close. I'm at seventh, right where I started the season, right at seven, according to draft rankings. So I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have some uh, uh, good news, right? We've been talking about uh, ticket giveaways you know for there's a big game coming up for usa versus canada uh april 28th and for the last two three weeks we've been uh throwing out there about how we're giving away a pair of tickets rugby morning's doing it eagle service eagles overseas is doing it and u.s rugby happy our lives doing it so basically six tickets to say usa uh beat up hopefully beat up on canada in la and it's also looking to be uh, a potentially doubleheader with an MLR match, uh, uh, RFCLA, and some other team. Let's leave it at that. Um, so we have one winner so far. I'm going to go ahead and announce this winner's name. And as the week goes on, maybe next week as well, we'll announce the next two winners. Uh, Fitzy, you don't have uh, your winner yet. Is that correct? I'm working on it. It's it's soonish. It could happen during the show. Okay, so could everyone happen. strap it in. Could. It could happen. So uh, the Eagles overseas winner of this uh, goes out to Renee Bertrand out of Stanford, California. So congrats, Renee. Two tickets for her. Uh, we do request, require, that you take a picture of yourself and your, and your friend going to the game during the game and you tag us on social media with those photos. So Fitz, you got to do the same thing with your winners. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> later on, we will uh, uh, announce the other winners, uh, including the U.S. Rugby Happy Hour Live. Not tonight for that one, but hopefully another one later on in the show. Uh, so, so stay tuned for that. Fitzy, tell us about discounted tickets. Uh, sorry, middle of the DM, trying to get the ticket winner situation oh. figured out from my side. <laughs> Breaking news, it could happen here live. But yes. If you didn't win the tickets, and we, we still have two more giveaways, Bill mentioned, if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, you can receive 10% off your ticket purchase. We'll include the link here in a second here. But use promo code either Eagle Overseas or Rugby Morning, and you can save 10% off your ticket purchase. Again, let's pack out the house for the Women's Eagles as they host Canada on Indeed. Sunday, April 28th. And that's Eagles overseas, um, not Eagle overseas. I think I did that. Or Eagles. Don't forget the S after Eagles. Right. There's more than one Eagle. That's <laughs> you misspell overseas. Rugby Morning all you want. I don't want him to get in the discounts. It's <laughs> all mine. All right, before we get into our discussions tonight, let's let's do this. Please, if you are listening right now uh, and you're not already subscribed to us on YouTube or Facebook, whatever, please go ahead and do that. Uh, subscribe to us. Like, follow. Share the show with your friends on any social media or, I don't know, send them a postcard. Tell them about the show. Also, follow us at Eagles Overseas and at Rugby Morning on Instagram, Twitter, and other social media channels as well. So, so check it out. Share it with your friends. We have fun doing this. Hopefully, you have fun watching, listening as well. Now, I'm going to throw something out to you guys as well. Um, Fitzy, I don't think I told you this yet. We're going to try something a little bit different tonight. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to post a link in the chat. So if you're on YouTube or Facebook, I believe when I post a link... You'll see it. So, 
It's a link to join us live on the show. Ooh. On camera with Fitzy and myself and possibly Ryan Yee when he joins us in about 15 minutes. Um, it's If you have a question, don't just come in and go, hi, and that's it and run away. I mean, if you have a question or a comment, come on in. We'll have a good time. I mean, you know, honestly, I know uh, uh, this guy, John Johansson, uh, is is listening in. Uh, he's had a hard time watching the Bruins earlier because he was blacked out. I, I heard him, saw him online. Now he's here. We're not blacked out. He's watching us instead of the Boston Bruins. So I love it. Right, so if he John. wanted to come on, I'd say but he doesn't know technology, so he's not even going to follow the link. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm going to post it up in a little while. It would be fun if one, at least one of you all did it. It would be fun to get you on here. So let's do it. So, Fitzy, we just talked about tickets for the USA women's game, but there is a, a game coming up soon. I'd like for you to take this. There's a game coming up that's been announced. Tickets are now on sale for the USA men's match against Scotland. Yeah. What else <clears throat> we got on that? Uh do we have something else on that? I don't know. Where are they playing? <laughs> Sorry, I was like, wait, am I supposed <laughs> to be saying something here? Yes, actually, let me pick up the ball and run with it and not knock it on here. Uh, sure-handed fly half here. Um, fullback, actually. Never missed a tackle in my rugby career. Not one. Back to the subject matter here. Yes. USA Scotland, that's taking place Friday, July 12th in Washington, D.C. at Audi Field, which is home of um, D.C. United and also Washington Spirit. Uh, they also play lacrosse there, but it's a new stadium that's right across South Capitol Street, across the street from Nats Park where the Washington Nationals play. It's going to be fantastic. The venue is dynamite. Actually, the, the, the D.C. Defenders, the XFL, UFL, whatever that is now, they play their home games there. The one end zone, it's basically like a vertical wall of fans. So you're like down on it. It hosts like maybe 28,000 this should be a, a sellout. This should be a sold out game. They should pack this thing out. It's going to be loud. If you recall, Bill, you know this better than I do. Oh, yeah. Back that nice warm night in Houston back in what was that July 2018 when yep. the men's Eagles beat Scotland. Can we have a repeat of that? Well, you got to get tickets to find out, of course, and pack the house. And, and since it's right in my own, it's in my backyard, I'm, I'm in DC. I'm going to try and try and loosely organize some type of like drink up. Before the Ooh. game, there's plenty of awesome, like, outdoor little pubs and breweries, like, right along the river there where we could knock a couple back, stumble wow. into the game, watch the men's Eagles beat Scotland. So, more to come on that. Bill, I hope you're going to make the trip down. I, I want to, I am, I, I, but I can't. Unfortunately, we have a big family uh, trip we do every year yeah. that weekend. So, I'm a little pissed off it's a Scotland weekend, but... I believe the weekend prior, uh, and I'm not sure how firm this is, USA yeah. is playing another team uh, um, in Chicago, I believe. Yeah. So I'm going to try to make that one. And I, Is that Romania, Portugal? I forget which one it is. I think it's Romania. You got it. Romania, yes. So there is another match to get to. I'm sad to miss um, USA bring, beat Scotland twice in a row. Bring the whole family down to D.C. You can stay with the Fitzpatricks. We'll, 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 it's a camping I'll, trip in I'll, Maine with three other families. So I'll pitch a tent <laughs> in, the, in the backyard. It'll be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> drive my great. drive a little camper in your front yard. Just pull it right up in there. <laughs> do you have a front yard? You don't have a front yard, do you? You just have like a. I've got a front um, porch. I've got a little. Bit okay, of front porch. Space. We've got off street. We've got off street parking. <laughs> no, we don't actually. Well, you will now. All right. <laughs> let's let's step forward. Wait, let's just keep picture, on. The... Hold on. I yeah. just picture. I just picture the. Um, I picture the uh, the scene from Christmas Vacation when Chevy Chase's brother comes rumbling in with the RV. Yeah. Is that, is, that, yep. uh, is, that, is that the vibe? Well, uh, not as dirty. I won't dump my, uh, you know, feces in your in your gutter or drain, whatever. But no. <laughs> All right, let's jump forward, Fitzy. Let's keep with USA men's rugby. Let's, I'm going to do a couple of little player updates. And usually I have images for this, but I didn't today. It's been a really busy week, and I apologize to our, our viewers. Uh, we'll give you a refund after the show. A uh, couple updates. Uh, people have asked online about Ruben de Haas's status. Yeah. Uh, he is with to Toyota Cheetahs. He says he's 100%. They kept him out of the first match last week uh, to give him more time to heal. So we should see him in the lineup possibly as early as this weekend. Uh, mm. uh, Cheetahs have a lot of matches lined up and some really tough games too. And it's and I like this too. I like him getting minutes now uh, at this level of competition because, uh, as we know, Scott Lawrence wants players of the USA side who are actually playing, getting mm. lots of minutes. Uh, Patty Ryan, you all heard. Signed with the Legion of MLR. He is due to make his appearance with the club um, after end of May, after the championship season's over in England. 
and he'll be coming over here after that. Even though I asked Ryan Yee to add him to our fantasy league, I didn't verify Wait, that until Bill, after I said that. Yeah, Bill, real quickly. So there's been he'll be the third Patty Ryan in MLR, and each of those Patty Ryans, they're all separate. Yes, have all played for San Diego, right? That's funny. I, I didn't know that until I yeah. <laughs> That's uh, that's interesting, and we had him on the show, and Brian we did Ray, ask I think him Brian if Ray from America's Rugby News pointed that out. Which is yes, hilarious. Brian Ray did. Yeah. Uh, we did ask uh, Patty about that if if that's a problem for yeah. him if he's going to have to have a throwdown with the other two Patty Ryan's, and uh, <laughs> I think he played played the fifth in that one. Also in France in Pro D two, uh, in Biarritz is Nafi uh, Maafu, whose brother plays for Anthem. Mm-hmm. Nafi's healthy. He's he's been hit hard with injuries for the last few years. Um, but he's still playing at a high level, and he's he's played nearly 80 minutes, I, th- I believe, three mm-hmm. matches straight up until a couple weeks ago when um, uh, Pro D2 went on break. So it would be nice to see him keep this form up and see him how, possibly with USA this summer. How old is he? I want to say about, young. yeah, 23, 24, I believe. Yeah, I feel like he's just been in France for like years, and he's only 23, 24, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, yeah, I know. I was trying to think back to my first interview with him during Eagle Eyed. That was like three years ago, I think. It was a long time ago. Yeah. But he went through his own source of injuries. Also in England, Corbin Smith, who uh, played USA U20s, uh, U23s last year, he plays for Hartbury, Hartbury University uh, in mm-hmm. the Bucks Super Rugby League or competition. He had a quarterfinals match tonight against Cardiff Met, and on Cardiff Met is also another USA U20s player, uh, Stefan Krimp. Um, uh, Hart Perry won tonight, 51-22. Uh, uh, Corbin did score at least one try. I haven't seen all the stats yet. Stefan hasn't been with the team for a while. I know prior to the new year he had a, uh, a knee and quad injury, uh, but I haven't seen him in the lineup yet. Unless he's back over here in the States, I haven't seen him. Um, but those two... We could see them. I've heard him mention that Stefan's been mentioned by Scott Lawrence as well. We should see mm-hmm. them possibly at least back with the U23s this next summer. Uh, other than that, that's the player updates as far as men players go. And we all know uh, the women players are overseas uh, getting ready for their match this weekend, which is a 9 a.m. game yeah. against number 12, South Africa. Yeah. That's right. And it's on TV. Yeah, yeah, 9 a.m. Yeah, on Rugby Pass TV, which uh, is free. And the match is at the home grounds of Trailfinders, uh, where uh, Kate Zachary plays, which is interesting. They don't call themselves Ealing Trailfinders. The men's side's side calls themselves Ealing Trailfinders, but the women only call themselves Trailfinders. I never actually thought why, but uh, they do. Uh, Fitz, let's jump over to the women's Eagles. Like I said, match this weekend. Um, uh, Sion Fukufuka's very first match at the helm with the USA team. Uh, very, I think the players are excited uh, talking to them. Uh, Charlie Jacoby, we spoke to last week, said mm-hmm. you know he, she's had conversations with them. She's excited as well. At least three debuts in line this weekend if they play. Uh, I don't know if you know Amanda uh, Berta, PR Sevens player, uh, and then a couple of uh, um, women's Premier League players and Cassidy Burgell at Beantown and Kelsey O'Brien from Colorado, Colorado Gray Wolves. So. Potentially a few new Eagles. I, I honestly, I thought I'd hear, see more, but um, that's good. 17 uh, Premiership players are in this right now. The only person missing, interesting enough, is uh, Alicia Washington. I th- I've seen her in the pictures. I've seen her in video. Mm-hmm. So maybe she's there on injury reserve, and uh, we'll hopefully see her. And also back with the team is Jenny Cronish, a uh, Beantown player. I ran into the her. Roster, at- the roster's not out. The match day 23 isn't out yet. No, it's I not. No, this is just a training squad over there in Europe right now. But um, It'll probably it's good come to see out I, tomorrow, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah, I would think yeah, yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, it was Saturday morning game, tomorrow or Friday yeah, yeah. morning. Uh, I did run into Jenny at the Free Jacks game a couple weeks ago, and she's excited. She's pumped to be involved in the mix right now and with oh. this team. Um, so it was, it was good talking to her. Uh, what else we have? Do you have any information, Fitzy, on the Pacific Four series? You know, it begins in April. I don't have the information right in front of me, but do you have any info other than you know, USA playing Canada on the 28th? You know, when do we play New Zealand? Do you remember that at all? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so Saturday, May 11th, New Zealand versus USA and Australia will be taking on Canada. And then on Friday, May 17th, Australia, the Walrus will take on USA. Um, so that'll be three important matches, particularly because – USA and Australia, and I could have this wrong, but they're the ones who are battling for that. Um, I think if you get you get third in the Pacific Four series, I th- I think you go up to 
XV1 and you yeah. also qualify automatically for Rugby World Cup 2025. So, yeah. um, and they're neck and neck. I mean, the, between the two of them, the rivalry has really been brewing. Obviously, with the new head coach for the men's Eagles, it should be interesting. Charlie Jacoby talked a little bit about it when we spoke with her last week. Just the, you know, some of the the, the fun chatter back and forth with some of her teammates there with the Reds who are Wallaroo. So it's gonna be it's gonna be intense. Now um, let's let's jump back to the men's side real quick. We have a question from uh, one of our followers or one of our listeners here right now about uh, Joe Taufete. It's a little small there. He's wondering if he's Joe going to play in the Scotland game. Uh, a bit of a blinder in that last game against Scotland. If you if you're all watching a bit of MLR right now, Joe is playing really well. Um, four weeks, he's two times in the team of the week for Major League Rugby. Uh, he's thinner. He's he looks fit, healthy. Um, knock on wood. Uh, I don't know if you've seen him play at all yet, Fitzy, but he seems to be in form again. He is in form, which is great. Um, Big Joe has got a, a nose for the the try line. A lot of competition in the front row though for sure like n- nothing is is guaranteed and i think that's probably the way that um that scott lawrence wants it so yeah i gotta imagine joe joe i almost said joe forte so <laughs> called a basketball player from years ago joe talfate is in the mix for it and would love to see him earn it because you're right what an impressive game he had indeed and, and one more thing one more comment here from our, our friend here from uh usa rugby league and union fan uh absolutely we need more internationals. Uh, I believe Scott Lawrence did say late last year about 13 internationals this year, uh, test matches. I think, what, 11 maybe it is now? Yeah, um, around then, around then which, which is more than we've had in a long time, and it's yeah. very key uh, to get us to the next level. Uh, yeah. But, yes. Okay. Anything else Anything else on USA Rugby, Fitzy? Uh, uh, Hong Kong Sevens <laughs> is next weekend, and USA oh. Rugby released – the the traveling squad for the men's side i'm sure the women's side will be coming out mm-hmm. in just a moment but uh, be on the lookout for that and also uh michael hooper um australia 15's captain apparently this is going to he is he made the australia roster for hong kong so you're gonna have dupont you're gonna have hooper out there should be exciting if you're a big sevens fan well gone are the days in usa rugby where todd clever played sevens also and Dan Lyle played 15. Alex Magleby played 15s and 7s. And <laughs> yeah, a lot of them. Wild, Chris, uh, Chris Wiles did it. Blaine Scully did it. Like all those guys. Yeah. Zach Test, all those. I think back yeah. then it, it really wasn't uh, a full time 7s players. It was just more, let's put a team together. <laughs> Dallin, Dallin did, Dallin Sever did 7s. Did he ever, was he ever on the 15s or was he more? I think it was just 7s. Just 7s, yeah. Was the only, I believe was the so. Only co- the only code that allowed him to wear gloves. Down, if you're listening, just, just messing with you. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm not. Just no gloves. Come on. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, uh, one quick note here. Uh, for those joining us now, uh, I am going to drop a link in here eventually. I'm a little scared about this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, it's a link for you if you really want to join us here live on video. Okay. Yeah. We do ask that you have good Wi Fi. Uh, we yeah. have our standards. I mean, they're not very high, but. Yeah. We have standards. <laughs> you have your clothes on, please. This is a right. Please let. close. It's a family show. <laughs> um, we are around the world, so somebody in Hawaii is. I don't know what time that is. Three. I don't know what time it is in Hawaii right now. But uh, <laughs> come on up. We'll say behind us. Is a five to California? It doesn't matter. Uh, we do ask cool. you to come up here and ask a question, and we'll and we'll say hello real quick, right. and we'll drop you back down and get rid of you. But um, besides that, uh, we're going to give it a try soon. Uh, hopefully, I don't forget. So, all right, with that said, let's move over to Major League Rugby. Uh, it's the fourth week, or the fifth week. What year what is this? Fifth week coming week, up? Yeah, week five. We've been through four yes. on week five. Yeah, you got it. Right, right. And it is the first bye week. We've got a bunch of teams off, yeah. a bunch of teams that need rest. Uh, but so far, uh, I've enjoyed the season. Yeah. You as well, right? 100%, absolutely. Oh, wait, I, I was going to say but, about that. i don't know if you all realize by now we we have notes for the show but today we decided you know what we're going to do some loose notes and just go from there and and figure out how it goes but uh, we've been doing this for a while like this anyway but it's been working out all right you know actually before we get further into it we do have someone to help us out with this uh a lot of times when i try to find research on players i actually go into our fantasy league uh, um list and go okay how's this player doing and a lot of this work this amazing work that 
uh, a, we we get the to read to get the privilege of reading is put on by our our guest right now and in his cohorts and all that. Um, so let's welcome to the show Ryan Yee from Fancy Rockers. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, guys. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Excellent. Good to see you guys. Hey, uh, killer information at the top about USA Rugby, but excited to talk a little bit of uh, MLR here. And I'm glad to hear, Bill, that you're uh, liking the website. I got to give a shout out, though. I don't have the brains for that. Um, <laughs> I know Fitzy is very familiar with uh, the gentleman, uh, the guru behind the fantasyruckers.com website that uh, sounds like it's so key to your prep research. Alistair Kirschpool, uh, co-host with uh, Fitzy for the Glorious Rugby podcast, uh, the fan podcast for Old Glory DC in the MLR. Um, yeah, he he's done a whole bunch of grunt work for that. So I've got to give a shout out to that every single time that the website's brought because he's done magnificent work for us um heading into the season and, and the seasons prior so but uh yeah glad to I didn't hear know that, that. Uh, fantasy is having a little bit of an impact outside just the fantasy world i, I sometimes think i'm a little crazy because it's just the fantasy world that i'm living in but it's a little <laughs> healthy, it sounds like keep on coming abel uh supreme commission we know it's <laughs> my brother hates it but i love it <laughs> And now, hey, real quick, let's talk about the Fantasy League. Uh, tell tell people how they can find you. You have a podcast to support it, which is you do a great job with that. Appreciate it. Uh, and I know you have you're expanded this year. Also, you didn't ju- you have two leagues going on at once. Is that correct? We actually have four leagues. Four plus our main OG league that's been going on. But yeah, it's been it's been a and the week, and the weekly challenge for anyone who and, who is in the season long can join too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sorry. But uh, yeah, it's been a, a wild journey. Uh, Fitzy's been with us since uh, since day one. Um, he kind of remembers the good old Excel sheet days where it was uh, me spending the weekends literally counting tackles and 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 meters <laughs> and things like that, which uh, got a little bit hectic, but I had no life outside of that. So it was all good. Um, and then, Bill, you hopped in in our, our season, the season after when we got a little bit of an upgrade, but not quite the, the full-fledged stuff. But now we're, we're full swing and we're loving it. Uh, the FantasyRuckers.com is where we're hosting uh the fantasy mlr kind of platform and it's been a lot of fun it's been kind of uh, a long goal of ours to make fantasy mlr a reality uh within the league uh we'd like to think that we've kind of done a good job with that a lot obviously a little steps to go here to make it even better um but it's been it's been a fun ride and i think the whole goal behind it was basically just to give people whether you're a new fan an old fan uh new to rugby a veteran of rugby, just a different way to kind of consume mm-hmm. the sport. We know how big fantasy sports is with other other kind of big four sports in North America, and we wanted to kind yeah. of do the same thing. Well, yeah, Ryan, I guess yeah, go a little bit deeper on that because I think when when folks think of fantasy rugby, they think like Super Brew, and you go on there, sure. and you like you have a salary, and then you kind of match. And it's not like that. It's more of the of the typical, the prototypical American sports fantasy, like football, where you have a snake draft and you have to set a lineup and, you know, I've got a player and you can't use that player and there's waivers and Mm. all that stuff more, Mm -hmm. you know, more symbolic or, you know, more something that, American sports fans are more comfortable with or familiar. Yeah, because of yeah. and I mean, that was kind of the thing that we wanted. I mean, we I play my brother who co-hosts with me on the Fantasy Rucker show, uh, the podcast that Bill mentioned there, uh, Devin Vandy Vanderpool, our third host, kind of our guinea pig who was kind of new to rugby, who used this <laughs> fantasy platform to kind of get familiar with the game, which has been really cool to see his growth. Um, we wanted to bridge that gap because we know – especially with European sports, uh, whether, you know, you're probably familiar with, again, Premier League does it this way. Um, for you, Fitzy, like Super Brew, like you mentioned, Six Nations, kind of this prototypical salary-based, pick your guys on a weekly basis type deal. But we want to bridge that with North American fantasy sports that people are familiar with. Um, and that's that whole idea of drafting your own team and having your kind of own team and your guys that you're kind of carrying through this season. It causes kind of, you know, unnecessary stress sometimes because you're kind of <laughs> consuming the sport in a, in a completely different way. Um, but that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to bring that kind of fantasy draft, have people have that experience, the waiver kind of process, which is something that doesn't really exist in the uh, the fantasy space when it comes to rugby as of right now. So the fantasy ruckers tackled that way. Uh, we thought the MLR was the the perfect opportunity to do, do something like that. And, and it's been rolling. And uh, again, like Bill mentioned, we have four leagues. Uh, we went public for the first time this season. Uh, people got to try it out for the first time. We had teased it for like three seasons before. We kept on saying it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But finally, with uh, some uh, some strings coming together, finally, and and us being able to have the wherewithal to put it out there, 
we were finally able to make that big step. And it's been a fun ride. People have been enjoying it. We love the feedback. Um, and, and Fitzy mentioned also the weekly challenge. And I want to throw that in there kind of before we go on to the MLR is that if you didn't have a chance to sign up for a week long season um, and, and be a part of the fantasy, a uh, fantasy Rutgers league, we do have the weekly challenge um, and you'll be able to sign up, dip your toes. And the way that kind of works is similar to that six nations kind of process that Fitzy was talking about. And that's, you know, you pick five guys every single week. You have a $15 budget. We value guys based on their 2024 performance. And it's kind of a fun way to kind of just dip your toe in fantasy. And if, if mm. you're liking that, then next year you'll be all ready to go to sign up in, in 2025. But it's been a blast. Uh, sign up, fantasyruckers.com. Uh, the link to do that is in all of our socials at the Fantasy Ruckers, and you'll be able to check that out. But it's been fun. One more, Bill, just because I know, Ryan, this deals with you and Bill and, 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 <laughs> and Matt McCarthy, but will there be relegation from the OG League? We well, when I went on to when I went to, on to MLR Weekly and Fitzy, you were there. I said that relegation will only apply to Matt McCarthy and Rugby Rap. So oh, good. We're giving the benefit of the doubt <laughs> to everyone else, but just because the way uh, and the heat and and some of the flack that I've been getting over there from that Rugby Wrap Up crew, um, I thought I'd give them a little bit more to to think about here as they trudge on um, here in the season. They did get their first win this past week in our fantasy league, so. Um, I will say that it, it worked. It did light a little bit of a fire under their butt, and it looks like that there's a little bit more pressure going forward. All right, let's jump forward, as you said. Let's talk MLR season. Let's okay. start with the Western Conference. All right, it's 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 a tough conference. You know, two of the in my mind, two of the top teams in the league, Houston and Seattle, are in that. Uh, one of them is now defeat, undefeated uh, out of the two last weekend. You know, San Diego in third, Dallas, Utah, RFCLA. Uh, Fitzy, I'm going to start with you. Yeah. Any surprises at, uh, after these first four weeks out of the Western Conference? Um, maybe a couple. I think um, I'll, I'll start the other way. In, in Utah, at one in three, I think is a little bit of a shocker. I, I like yeah. the Utah Warriors. I like what they've done. I think certainly not having Joe Mono the first couple of weeks certainly hurt them. They weren't scoring as much, and certainly when he came back, that was a fun game between RFC LA and and if you look at Utah and you look at their record. Their losses they had, yeah, they may be one in three, but they've they've played some outside of you know they've played some good competition, right? And I think this is a, is a team that's probably going to turn around a little bit here now that Mono's back in the lineup. They can get a little more uh, creative, and as the weather gets warmer, so I, I think Utah will turn things around. Dallas at two and two, um, maybe we saw this coming at the end of last year and just how competitive they were in staying in games. But for me, I think this is fun for the league that Dallas is two and two right in the, in the thick of things. And, yeah. you know, right there, the fourth spot um, with an opportunity to make the playoffs, just the turnaround that they had is, is fantastic. And I hope that continues. And, you know, obviously Houston and Seattle, they were good last year. They made the playoffs. San Diego, I think, you know, it, it's funny. They've, They've kind of quietly maybe gone three and one. And what I mean by that is I think the expectations that they were going to come out of the gate just like barnstorming and it didn't happen. And yeah, week one, they went up to Seattle and lost, but they almost knocked off the Seawolves. And they just kind of seem to be, I don't know, plodding along there. And I think some of the things are, you know, kind of the lineup issues. I don't think they've figured out the fly half stuff, whether they're waiting on Gateau or not. I like the clutchy, yeah. but. Um, San Diego's three and one. I guess if you look at that, you could say, "Hey, things are fine." But I don't think they're quite firing on all cylinders yet, and that's what makes me nervous. Because when they do, watch out. That Western Conference race could get even more crazier. Ryan, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, Western Conference. It it looks as high powered as it did last uh, last season, and and just as competitive, which is great to see. Um, interested with the San Diego point there, Fitzy. I'm not as concerned. Uh, with them right now, I think though, and and Maddie and I have talked about this on the show. I think this is a different San Diego team. I don't think we are ever going to see that high-powered offense like we did last year. I think losing Richard Judd, his ability to move that ball at the breakdown as quickly as he did, I think really fed into that, and that was a very low under the radar kind of loss that they had that I think is going to have a much bigger impact. But what's interesting is that they've kind of flipped their identity where now they're just playing really solid defense, which is not something that we thought about San Diego, at least last season. We always thought of San Diego being high flying um, with their, their, their big offense scoring, you know, a whole bunch of points, but this year they've been able to kind of lock it down. And again, 
shutting out Old Glory DC. I know the weather was pretty crazy. I had to throw it in there, Fitzy, because I know you're the in-house DC fan. Uh, shutting out you guys in the in the second half there, but they they look they look solid at least from the defensive front, and we know how dangerous that can be. The, the wind the wind shut out Old Glory in the second. Yeah. Half. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, San Diego did too. Own. It's it's a hard thing to do, nonetheless. But <laughs> I think San Diego's defense looks solid. Um, so three and one, I mean, I think they're just a different team this year. I don't know what you're thinking about with that high powered offense is actually ever going to come. Uh, but we'll see again. Um, I don't think Maddie and I, at least us on the fantasy record show, were as high on San Diego heading into this season. I don't think they're definitely not as good of a team as they were last year, but hey, three and one, they should be quite happy with that. Um, you, you covered it perfectly there with Utah Warriors, a whole bunch of injury stuff, uh, and, and not obviously where they want to be at, but we'll see whether they can turn it around. Fun to see the Dallas Jackals kind of turning around. But, I mean, we got to talk about Houston, right? I mean, undefeated. Yeah. Who would have thought, you know, after one month of play that they'd be the team that's at the top? A lot, Obviously, a lot of Seattle hype after the few weeks of play. And, and what a match we had this past Friday. I said it on, on our podcast that that was the best quality match of the year so far. Despite the crazy weather conditions, despite what we thought was going to be a low-scoring game because of a good Seattle defense, and Houston, you know, being able to kind of mitigate that, um, it went completely the opposite way. And it was just back and forth punches being thrown. Um, and maybe we should have seen this coming with Houston, uh, with the way that they've been kind of trending upwards over the course of last season and then this year. But, man, Houston looks electric when they're they flying. And I, and I love them. And my two cents are, Sandy, I feel the same way as Fitzy does about San Diego. Uh, you know, a guy like Greg Peterson, I think, as he settles into the team, is going to be a, a bit of a game changer for them, although he's going to be out for a couple of weeks. Uh, got nicked up a bit in practice leading up to last week's game. Uh, hopefully, just a couple weeks. So note that in the league there. Um, <laughs> Wait, is that breaking? Is that breaking news, Bill? Are you breaking news? I'm gonna have to write that down because maybe we've got to make some IR changes. That's that, that might be. Uh, let's just say I got that from an extremely reliable source. <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>. So, <laughs> so he's out for a short amount of time. It's not a bad thing. He, I was told. Uh, <laughs> But also Utah, I think Utah uh, will get better. You know, I, I love this whole story about the Cruze brothers. You know, Isaiah coming in, scoring his first try. I love those two with Micah and him. Um, you know, I, I just I feel like with Joe Manley, like you mentioned earlier, uh, Fitzy, the team's going to come around. They're going to play better. You know, maybe this loss this past weekend maybe bumps them a little bit and gets them going. So uh, those I only had those couple of things about to say about the West. Uh, it, it is a tough comp- tough. Jeez, uh, I can't talk. It is a tough conference. Uh, and and those teams will be battle worn going into June, you know, which is a long time away. Uh, in the West, also, I know one thing we mentioned. Um, I just mentioned about the Cruze brothers. There were others. So I think Brian Ray mentioned some other uh, uh, brothers who played or started at the same time. Do you remember the others? I know uh, the Suniolas. I think started a game together. What were the others? Now, now, is that on the same team? Because we've we've seen brothers compete against each other. Right. No, same yeah, teams yeah. and starting together yeah. on the same because, team. Because at Old Glory DC, you've got Brady Daniel and Corey Daniel. Corey Daniel, obviously, mm. is more well-known. Capped Eagle, you know, I think leading MLR in tackles again this year. His his brother Brady um, is, is on the squad. Um, so, But I don't think they've actually stepped together on the field um, and, and played together at the same time in an MLR regular season game yet. So, True. True. Well, I do enjoy watching Seattle still. I, I, I love tuning in the games when they're not on at 10 p.m. East Coast time. <laughs> past bedtime, Bill. It, way past my bedtime, man. I'm I'm at 8 a.m. No, it's getting 8 p.m. <laughs> I am not. Uh, but I mentioned earlier about Joe Taofete to about USA, and he's playing phenomenal with Seattle right now. Uh, and it, it's just a matter of time till you know he starts scoring more tries for this team if he stays healthy. It's yeah. a guy that's going to be is really going to help that team succeed. Um, anything else about the West before we move on? No, it's it's fun. I, I love the competition in here. This is uh, this is some of the top rugby, at least in in the MLR here on this side. Houston, Seattle, San Diego, Dallas emerging. I love it. Yeah, all good stuff. And then of course, like LA getting their first win, which is nice mm-hmm. to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, East Coast. Nice oh, two yeah. Canadian, by the way. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh speaking of Canadians, uh, Josh. Larson and his brother Travis actually started together for Austin in 2019. So I got that note. Eastern go. Conference. All right. Um, New England, my boys, are on top right now at 3-1, tie with Noel Gold. 
Chicago third at one two and one, DC one two and one, Miami one and three, Anthem zero oh, and four. I feel like there's a lot of underperforming going on with some of these teams, uh, DC specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nola, you know, nothing against the Free Jacks, but I think Nola. Uh, I, I'm keeping an eye out for them. Free Jacks are, are sputtering right now. They're not the um, you know in my mind right are not the the best team. You mm-hmm. know, they're getting by in a couple games so far. They will get better, obviously, and they have great players in that team. With Reese McDonald is early in my mind early favorite for MVP. It's a long season. Uh, Jason Patros. If you watch that game against Chicago, he was winded by halftime. It was great to see how hard he worked. <laughs> it made me feel good about the last time I played. Uh, <laughs> Miami got their first win. Uh, and again, I think out of these six, DC is the one that's uh, disappointing to me right now. Because uh, you look at that roster. Stop it, Pitsy. Yeah. You look at that roster. Um, Ascaro is playing amazing. What, three, uh, yeah, three team of the week selections for him. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of good players in that team. I think it's just a matter of time until they start playing better. Um, and then winning at the last second uh, in New England again. But <laughs> uh, Ryan, we'll start with you. What do you think about the Eastern Conference? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was going to ask you, Bill, about the New England Free Jacks. I know you're the in-house Free Jacks guy. Um, definitely not getting the same vibes as I was getting, I guess, towards the tail end of last season. I know last year, kind of at the early portion too, I mean, there was kind of like questions surrounding New England. Um, but, and again, long season, so they'll, they'll continue on. But I mean, I think if you were to told them, you know, you would have been 3-1 into the 2024 year, uh, that's what championship teams do. And that's what top yeah. class organizations do is even when they're not clicking on all cylinders, they still end up being 3-1 and they still end up winning these types of games. So concerns True. aren't really there for New England. I don't think that they're, I think the the gap between them and the rest of the Eastern Conference is not as large as we thought it was going to be coming into this season. But again, it's still a top-tier organization that is going to be tough to beat on any given weekend uh, here moving forward. You mentioned it. I'm stoked about this NOLA Gold team. My brother has been high on this NOLA Gold team ever since last year. Um, He actually predicted them to win the Shield before they fell off a cliff halfway through the year. Um, But when they can start getting it clicking together, that back line, is incredible like and, and vandy said it on her show it might be one of the best back lines in the entire league because when they're all together when iona is doing his thing i mean the center pa- pairing of jp dubacy jordan jackson hope is just incredible and then you add what philomone is doing right now ed fito's back and in his first game back he scores a try looks electric ps was very angry that i did not have him in my lineup this past <laughs> ended up going with your boy fitzy axel muller and he put up not nearly as of good of a uh a performance as uh, as Fido, but um, I'm excited. Again, tempering with expectations here with Nola because we saw kind of similar things last year where they were clicking when they were clicking, and then when they kind of fell off the cliff, it was a tough one. Um, I agree with you. There is concern around Old Glory DC. For me, it's just when are we going to see the consistent Old Glory DC team? They show flashes of brilliance. We saw what they did against uh, New England. There was a lot of hype and excitement there, and then they come out next week and, and they do what they 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 you know are known to be doing, and just you don't know what you're going to get from them. But as soon as they can start kind of putting consistent matches together, I think they'll they'll sort it out. I mean, they burned me a second time here this season, so I can't go against saying the biggest disappointment is the Chicago Hounds because I mean, what is this this Billy Meeks? um experiment that they're doing at the fly half position and we've been very outspoken about it on the show where he's going to be most effective is going to be at that center line that's where his skill set is his breakability his big gains uh where he can get his his impact at that center position he's just not able to do that and he you can see that he still has center tendencies when he's playing at the distributor role and he's looking to attack before moving the ball so they're not able to use those weapons that they have in Nate Oxberger, who they just signed of the season, who I hope is is uh, able to kind of return swiftly here from the injury he sustained over the weekend. But man, Chicago, uh, burning me once again. I thought they were going to be good last year, definitely not. And this year, it looks like uh, they're going to going to be the same. Anthem, they're anthem from a fantasy sense. Yeah, throw your <laughs> throw everyone that you have fantasy wise whenever they're playing the anthem. And Miami, good for them, getting their first uh, week uh, win of the week at home this past weekend. Um, in franchise history, they're still looking to click things together, which is expected with a brand new franchise. Fitz, what do you think? Yeah, I think um, I, I think what a uh, few things that Ryan said I think are right. I think the gap between New England and everyone else has gotten smaller. Um, I mean, last year the Free Jacks were practically invincible, right? Thirteen game win streak or whatever that was, 
you know, just kind of steam through the the Eastern Conference on their way to their first MLR Shield. You know, when when Old Glory DC kept coming back and kept hanging around and then took it from New England at the end. And you can contest whether or not that should have been a try by William Talatayina. But the point is, uh, New England last year would have shut the door on Ogilvy and not let him come back, particularly at home where they play so well. I think uh, the other teams in the Eastern Conference realized, okay, this is this is not quite the same New England team for whatever reason. Maybe they're just off to a slow start. And then the next week, Nola Gold jumps out and pops him in the mouth and goes up by two tries. <laughs> Then I think New England was like, wait a second, we are the free jacks here. We're not going to drop two in a row at home and, and and ended up pulling away. I think the free jacks will be fine. They're, they're a tough team. I like that organization. I like what they've done. Uh, fan engagement's fantastic. Great record at home. Injury concerns. I think, you know, speculation it looks like John Poland could be out for a long time. I think he came off injured. There's speculation he will be out for the season. Um, I don't have any definitive news on that, but I'm hearing he may be out for a bit. So that's something to keep um, an eye on as well, right? Because injuries certainly happen, and there's certainly other scrum halves there in New England that can play. But no, no gold. I mean, hey, I, you know, Maddie, you know, Ryan's brother's right. Like two years ago, everyone thought Nola Gold was going to come out and do their thing, and it didn't happen. This year, they've proven it, and that back line is, is awesome. Let's see if that can sustain. If you're Chicago, though, you're one, two, and one. Look at the teams you played and look at what's going on in your back line situation. When Carlisi was thrown in at fly half, all of a sudden they were starting to move the ball around a little bit. And I think Sam Harris and the, and the crew are wise enough to the fact that, okay, I think we got to put Billy Meeks back. And Chicago's got a tough match against Seattle this weekend. They can't afford to lose another one here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Meeks back to center. Cardi maybe potentially back in 10. Carlisi playing fly half again. But – Chicago's one, two, and one. They're they're fine right now. They're in third place in the Eastern Conference. There's more than enough time to be able to, for them to figure it out. I'm a little concerned about Nate Osberger. I, I don't know how long he'll be out for. I think you know he is a spark plug there, the heart and soul of that team. Um, be interesting to see how his injury impacts them going forward. And look, if you're old Glory DC, uh, week one, you know not going to try against Nola. That stunk, but then they bonus point win against the free jacks the next week well we all know what happened in week three when they played chicago and that bogus i'm sorry my language that bullshit red card that jamison fanana schultz got okay maybe not maybe not the red card bs but the five week suspension afterwards Mm -hmm. i think is ridiculous and absurd and go read alistair kirschpool's thoughts on on the suspension um i think that's ridiculous particularly the knock-on effect now as it relates to men's Eagles and yeah. the rest of his MLR career, like he gets another suspension. How long are we talking here? 10 games here. So anyway, so old glory, that back line is coming into form. I'm excited. Damian Hoyland. He's been playing really well since he's come in. <laughs> Tommaso Boney is a capped Eagle. We know what he can do. His very first game as a USA men's Eagle, he scored two tries against Spain. William Tyler Taina, as Brian knows, is one of the top scoring centers in MLR over the last few seasons. Axel Muller in his very first game in MLR scored two tries. I'm not worried about Old Glory DC. They have a get right game here against Anthem in week five. They should go down there and hang 60 on them. Anything less than that would be a disappointment. (laughs) They turn around the next week and they have RFC LA. That'll be interesting just because that'll be a step up. They have a bye and then they have Houston. That'll be a true test. That's going to be later in April. Let's talk then about whether or not Old Glory DC is a disappointment. So, yeah, Eastern Conference though it's 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 a dogfight as should be expected. And look, Miami got their first win; they're hanging around too, right? So we'll be seeing. Yeah. And I'm just excited that it's kind of, it's a competitive conference. Well, it's know? it's it's funny because it's almost especially with the expansion of the playoffs, right? So now that we have four teams from each conference making it into the playoffs, no buys anymore. You look at the Western and Eastern Conference; it's almost it's it's a benefit in two different ways, right? Like for the Western Conference, you're trying to get, like there's so many good teams in that conference that easily four of them should be making it from that side. And then there's hope on the Eastern Conference side because what you're saying, Fitzy, it's a dogfight in there, right? And they're just sludging it out. So, I mean, um, it, it'll be interesting to see where it all shakes out here as we get, you know, towards on towards the later, later half of the season, for sure. Now, Fitzy, you mentioned... Um 
fan base, fan experience, say, at, at, in Quincy for free jazz games. One of our um, uh, our viewers here did ask a question about that. And I know it's a little small to read, but he said the New England Free Jacks have done an incredible job with fan engagement. Can you speak of how other clubs are doing with uh, you know that important aspect of a game? So, Fitz, you can probably speak personally to Old Glory. Uh, Ryan, I'm not sure who you can speak of, but um, what are your experiences so far with other other teams that you've noticed or have seen? Uh, I'll go first. I think yeah, I think New England has set the bar for what it what an MLR club should do in terms of fostering a fan engagement and just the experience around a game. It's got to be more than just a rugby game, right? You got to mm. you got to draw in the casual fan who's there for a beer fest or for a concert or something afterwards. Like everything that New England does up there, top notch, fantastic. I think other clubs they understand they're trying to, they need to do that and they're trying to do it. It's just things work a little bit different differently in each market. I think New England has the benefit of historically being a, a hotbed for rugby where you have a very, very, um, you know, it's a great participatory sport up there from, from all the club teams that are up there from the prep schools are up there. And I certainly think that helps There's a lot of the colleges that are around there that play rugby that helps. I think down in DC, some issues may have been too far from, you know, downtown DC, although the Maryland soccer plex mm -hmm. is a, is a fantastic venue. It's grass, which is amazing. It looks good on TV. It, it's awesome when you're there. They play a lot of top-notch rugby there, collegiate rugby championships. Uh, they also play there. That'll be later in April again. So, And I think each market needs to figure out um, what they need to do and, and, and do well and, and continue to tap into ways where they have to bring in that casual fan and make it a festival experience, youth rugby, other things. And I know that's hard because those are, those are hard costs and those are expenses and, and everything else. But um, certainly the free jacks are leading the way when it comes to that. And I think the other clubs, and I, we just mentioned a few in the Eastern conference that we know of, but I think other clubs are doing it well. I think Utah's got a yeah. solid scene going on there. I think Houston, I think what Miami's doing, tapping into the flare down there. That is awesome to see. Obviously, we know Seattle's got a good thing going on up there. So, um, yeah, there are clubs that are doing it, but the Free Jacks, I hate to admit it, they are, they are leading the way when it comes to that. Yeah. Ryan, any of your experiences as well? I, I still have to get to my first MLR game, guys. That, isn't what? that crazy? <laughs> isn't that crazy to think about, right? I mean, I've been following this thing for over half a decade now. Um, uh, all the way since the beginnings. And obviously, I've lost my opportunity to go see the hometown Toronto Arrows play because uh, they are now no more. I heard very good things. Maddie's been to a game. He went to one game uh, when, now I guess both the teams are no longer in existence, but he went to a New York Iron Workers Toronto Arrows game when they were playing in Hoboken. Um, and he said that was a pretty, pretty good experience. But again, to, to Fitzy's point, um, it's more well, Ryan, than, you gotta, we gotta get you to an old glory. Well, I talked to AKP all about glory. it. I've yeah. talked to AKP. He's invited me kindly to one of your little old glory DC, uh, gatherings. So maybe I'll have to take a gander. That's the closest team to where I'm at. Uh, not too far, maybe uh, a little over an hour drive. So we'll have to figure it out. Um, I'd love to go to San Diego, um, yeah. to check out the final this yeah. year. That'd be fantastic. But to Fitzy's point though. It's, I think, the biggest thing there. It's more than the game, right? You're not going to, at least where the game is right now, you're not going to attract people to the venue by just rugby alone. We just need people in the door to find and discover that rugby is this fantastic and beautiful sport that is, in my opinion, obviously a whole bunch of bias, having played it for most of my life and all that, is the best sport in the world. Um, but we just got to have people discover that we need to get them through the gate. Um, and it's doing things like Fitzy said in terms of, you know, doing these events, doing these little promotions. I love the big thing that I love, um, is, is those packages that you can buy. Like if you're a season ticket holder, like you automatically get an additional ticket to bring someone it's things like that, right? Just making it accessible to people and easy and, and, the less barriers that we can have for people to attend these games, that's when we're really going to start to see rugby start to get more popular and people going to these games, watching these games on TV. Um, that'll be the big thing. So we'll see. Uh, I think teams are on the right track. I think, again, uh, to the turn it full circle, New England has kind of set that precedent and set the bar in terms of what is the standard. We just need teams to not do it exactly like them, but find their own kind of cultural flair when it comes to where they are, whether it's Miami and tapping into that area and, and things like that. It's just finding what your community is looking for and, and then going from there. 
Yeah, I, I, I like this comment. I don't know if we need to turn it into uh, Hong Kong Sevens, but um, <laughs> it, it's not not the worst idea. <laughs> <laughs> Although some of the free jazz games I've been to, it's pretty damn close. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've seen some of the Yahoos out there that go to those games. Oh, yeah, you've talked to a few of them too. <laughs> All right, one one quick note before we move on here. This this one cracks me up. This is our buddy here getting his Coles dollars, um, yes. shopping for with his Coles bucks, and <laughs> that's dedication. That's dedication. That's what that's what we're striving for at the Fantasy Rutgers Bill is for someone to be walking through Coles, <laughs> listening to a show. I think that's when you know you made it, right? So, Bill, that's. Yeah, I, I'm picturing I'm picturing a big boom box on the guy's shoulder. <laughs> is that how it's done? Any, I don't know how it's done anymore. <laughs> Thirty years ago, Bill. <laughs> Thirty. I, I keep dating myself. It's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the eight o'clock bedtime that's speaking through there. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, <laughs> all right. Let's let's talk about uh, some players real quick in the league. We talked about teams, and we did mention some players. Um, you know, are there some maybe newer names that are standing out um, for either of you two that have been fun to watch? You know, not necessarily early favorites for MVP. I know that's really early even to talk about that. But some players that may be standing out for you in this league right now. Anybody? Ryan? Jade Stigling. Yeah. I, I, who would have thought, right? I mean, we talked about on the on our show that um, we there were a whole bunch of questions in terms of what this Seattle – back three was going to look like just because of how much talent they had there. Um, obviously, Duncan Matthews being there, Ina Futi with what he did last season, um, to bringing in Tony Pulu. No one was talking about Jason yeah. heading into the year. Yeah. And then the only guy that has been the full-fledged starter for every single match for the Seattle Seawolves for what I would say is probably one of the best back three trios in the entire league is Jade Stiglin. Like you would have probably guessed Ina Foodie would have been that guy. Yeah. You probably would have guessed maybe Tony Pulu bringing that experience in. Who would have thought it was Jade Stigling? And what he's been able to do uh, for the Seawolves um, in, in the course of those four matches, just eye-popping. Um, love the Superman uh, tribe. Forget it was like a couple of weeks ago when he did that. Um, but he's been he's been fun to watch. And I think what makes it more exciting was a guy that – it was a guy that was on none of our radars. And he's coming in here and he's, he's, he's shown up. Um, it's been fun. What do you think, Fitzy? Yeah, Bill, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go the other way and, and just two players who have MLR experience who are back, sticking with Seattle, mm. Mac Mason, fly half mm. there. Just steady, man. Just automatic Mac Mason. I uh, remember like automatic Al, what was his name, the kicker? Uh, oh. for the, uh, God, why am I blanking on his last name? DeGreco, is that it? Anyway, um, you guys are shaking your head. Anyway, he's, he's a kicker who just nailed that kick. But yeah, automatic, sure. automatic Mac Mason. You know, he's 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 been such a steady fly half for um, Seattle. Mm -hmm. After right, they they traded AJ Alatimu down to um, Houston, and Jordan Chite right went yeah. to RFC LA. So bringing back Mac, bringing back Mac Mason has been back into the MLR has been good for them. Uh, and then Jason Robertson right uh, for mm -hmm. Old Glory DC uh, when he left a couple of years ago. Guy. Well, I mean, but, but but the numbers back it up, though, Ryan. Look look at look at the fantasy. <laughs> oh, you're gonna hit me with the numbers thing. I am. Yeah. Hit you with the numbers. <laughs> no, it's, it's no, it's fun. I, no, it's just it's it's. I I was waiting for it. I was waiting for the the old board DC guy. I was gonna bring up a couple of era. Oh wait. <laughs> oh no! Don't don't be doing that. I and, and to be fair, for full context <laughs> and full clarity, I have not. I was given the the mission and the goal this year that I need to pick a team. Finally, I've never, I have not been a fan of any MLR team since I've been following this thing. I just like watching rugby and, and fantasy MLR has been my number one team over the past uh, several seasons, but we'll see where that goes. But no, I don't, I don't blame you. Jason Robertson's a, it, it's been fun to watch. It's been cool to see him back. Here's yeah. uh here's some late breaking news about players. Um, Houston Sabercats announced the return of us born English raised back row. Uh, Tamiwa. Oh God, I'm gonna mess this up. I've a gob gone. I bet you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, okay, no, big, uh, <laughs> big, big dude, uh, 22 years old. Experience. Yep, Lopro Rugby, La Leicester Tigers alum, um, earned his uh, MLR debut for the Cats off the bench last season. So he is back, a uh, big dude. Uh, Ryan, I did want to mention the reason why I got on here real quick is I would just, I wasn't, not that I'm bored with you guys, I just want to check something real quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> you will get a chance to watch the Arrows Academy program again, they okay. are back. You're throwing me a bone. That's good. Can okay. I? I'm on my fantasy MLR squad. You can't do, do that. 
<laughs> well, if you want to lose points. But um, so it was announced today. Rugby Quebec announced today the launch of the East Coast Rugby Championship. The competition will start May 6th. Six teams from Canada and USA, including the Free Jacks U23 side and the Toronto Arrows Academy side. And a few other teams in there, the Nova Scotia Celtics, uh, uh, Rugby good Quebec. Boy, Nova Scotia, good, good East Coast boys out there, I guess. Yep. I, uh, is that don't even, don't, I mean, don't get me, it, it's good to see. And again, I think there was extenuating circumstances when it came to the Arrows. Um, I think we've co- covered this topic. I'm sure you guys have covered it a whole bunch over the off season with everything. But the way the state that Rugby Canada is in right now, um, definitely not looking as optimistic as uh, as you Eagles boys down here. So I might have to to jump ship here, and then maybe uh, you know citizenship is coming up soon. So maybe that would be my. <laughs> oh. You have a fantastic women's program. Yeah. Yes, and that is great. And I wish we had fantasy. And I, I saw a a comment in here about kind of the maybe possibly putting like a professional women's version of the MLR. It'll take some time. We got to establish the MLR first, and then we'll go from there. But if we could have a, a fantasy international women's side, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Drop all the Canadian players. I know uh, Derek Brissett of the Lou Rouge Rugby Podcast would be pretty pretty stoked about yeah, that. He's crushing it. He is crushing it. Crushing it. it. It's been fun. Well, I, I I've loved this season so far. Well, Ryan, we got to let you go. It's All past right. my bedtime. Oh, Bill, I got one, I got one more question. <laughs> yeah, you guys, go ahead. You guys may have seen this. It, it just came down a couple hours ago. But uh, Wales superstar, Louis Rezeman, who's taken a break from international rugby. Mm-hmm. We all know he went through the thing. Signed with the Kansas City Chiefs. He signed. Wow. So, yes. Yeah, so my question to you guys, do you think we will see LRZ actually step onto an NFL field for a regular season game before no. it's, it's all said and done. No. Odds are against it. No. Yeah. Odds are against it. He is he is a specimen, but I, it's it's interesting. And I, I was listening into it today, and not to take up too much time here, but I was actually listening something today where um that every NFL team has like two international spots that don't mm-hmm. take up any part of the 90 man. Hmm. So they have, I think, the next two years to evaluate him and have him not count towards that. So We'll see what he does over the course of that two years. I don't expect him to be on the main roster 53 uh, in, within those two years. They'll have to make the decision after that. His metrics just don't – if he wants to be a wide receiver or running back, um, his metrics – he showed it at that that international combine that they had. It's just – it's it's not – it's not – up I, would, I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past Andy Reid to find creative ways to get him the ball. This is a guy who, who knows contact. Who can catch? He can run. I don't know. I think they could get creative with him. Anyway, just you know, I'm not saying he will, but I I think there's a. <laughs> I know it sounds like, it sounds like he says he will. I mean, I'm all for it. I mean, I love seeing rugby guys make it make it big, and and it was really cool to see to, him chase his his dream. So I mean, I'm I'm rooting for him 100. percent Always a players guy. Want to see it? Just like Bill said, odds are kind of against it. But man, if we were able to see him, you're right. If there's one coach that's that that would find a way, it'd be. It would be Andy Reid, but uh, yeah, love to see the crossover there between uh, between football and rugby. Yeah, and, and the practice squad salary is pretty darn good for it's not playing games. Than, yeah, it's better than most rugby <laughs> players are paid. That's for sure. So, uh, right, yeah, it's, it's funny. But you well, know. you know, I, I think Taylor Swift has a sister, right? So, no, sorry, that's a whole. Other thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, Ryan, Ryan we're going to let you go. Uh, it's been a blast. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, once again, let, let our listeners know how we can they can find you and the Fantasy League. Yeah, uh, socials, at the Fantasy Ruckers. Um, we post content there almost daily, um, just about the latest happenings when it comes to the world of Fantasy MLR. Uh, if you're interested in getting your first taste, playing that weekly challenge, uh, you'll be able to sign up. That is also in our bio of our socials as well. Check us out on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. The Fantasy Rucker Show has all the information there for you as well. I uh, was not able to beat Bill uh, here last week. He uh, he kicked my behind when it came to <laughs> his new three jacks guys. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Jason Putras, that two-try performance was a really uh, killer one. But I think my, my epitome of my season, though, the, the climax was me beating Fitzy the week before. So I'm all good. I can lose the rest of the way out, and I – I'm feeling pretty good, so it's all all. Fine. <laughs> but, uh, again, I'm already I'm already dueling with one ye brother. Now I got to deal with dueling. Well, now with I'm in one. it. I'm in it. You, we, we're, we're you, you've asked for it, so 
Um, it, we, we should, <laughs> but again, uh, Discord community as well. Uh, the link in that is also in our descriptions. Have a cool, cool bunch over there. Growing community, people talking MLR, uh, game day leading up to it. It's been a whole bunch of fun. So yeah, uh, we appreciate the support at the Fantasy Rutgers. It's great. It's been a wild journey and hopefully you can tag along and we'll make it uh, even more fun moving forward. All right, man. Sounds good. Have a great weekend. Yeah, have a great weekend, guys. Appreciate it. Cheers. Okay. All right. Did you see how he was way more excited about beating you than he was about losing to me? <laughs> that was telling, Fitzy. <laughs> all good i got my one loss out of the way i'm done hopefully i'm done with losses too but i don't i have a feeling that's gonna keep going but <laughs> it's gonna be tough with by the getting go happen in here yeah no kidding all right so listen fitzy uh i'm i really wish i can get off the weekend of the 12th to get down to your house to have that big pig roast whatever you're doing in the ground and and beer fest before the usa game against scotland yeah, come on down. Uh, anyway. Like a like a, a good old Fijian pig roast, you know, you yeah, just put it in the ground. Yes. No. Bring yes. your own bring your own pig. <laughs> 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 All right, buddy. Let's call it a night. Uh good stuff. If uh y'all still listening in, please like, subscribe, follow this podcast on YouTube, uh, Facebook, wherever else, and subscribe to our podcast channels as well. And you can listen to the replay of the show coming out tomorrow. And you can share these videos still. They'll be live forever, or for a while at least. Thanks again. Have a great night.